Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, this next video is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to upload on uh, basically just a transformation of my Q power from uh, where it was just stock with the stock tires and everything to where it is right now. Um, so again, this is this is part one and this is going to be replacing the front and rear wheels. So I got my controllers, my battery and everything out of there. Right now what I want to do first, I want to put some street tires on this thing. Um, the knobby tires, I don't ride off road really and the knobby tires are a little bit rougher on pavement. I want to get better traction. I'm a little nervous because this thing has so much torque, so much acceleration. With the knobby tires I was spinning them a lot because I'm not used to riding this beast yet. Um, but anyway, I went and I bought some street tires. Here they are. So, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I want to replace these knobby tires with this nice street tire. This thing looks pretty nice. I like it. Give me a lot more traction on the ground. Hopefully, uh, give me a better feeling of, of control when I'm riding this thing. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is remove my front tire. And to do that, it looks like there's two bolts or two nuts, one on each side here. Now, unlike the Q1, the forks uh, opening is at the front, so you should be able to loosen both the nuts and without having the tire, without having to support the wheel for fear of it falling down because um, it's going to slide out forwards, not drop down like on the Q1. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this nut and this nut here. Okay, so I got the nut on each side loosened. And next there's a washer, this one right here. It's one of those lock washers, uh, which kind of has a tab on it that goes through a hole into this metal plate here. So it's kind of like a safety, safety uh, lock mechanism um, to keep the tire from, even if this nut came off, to, to try and hold the tire in. So I gotta kind of pry that tab out of the slot there and then I'll be able to pull this washer out and do that on both sides. Okay, so to get that uh, washer out of there that's kind of in that slot, I'm just going to put the screwdriver, this is an open slot on the fork in the front where the tire's going to slide on, I'm just going to put a flathead screwdriver in there and just kind of... There we go. Okay, so now I got those out on each side. Um, there's another washer on on the side that doesn't have the brake, I want to be careful about this. There's one more large gold washer on this side. Doesn't look like it locks in or anything. Uh, so that, that should be fine. It's just a round washer. So that should come out on this side just straight out. On this side I have the same gold washer. Uh, I'm sorry, right here. There's the same gold washer on the inner part. There's also a larger silver washer. So there's two washers on this side. A thinner large silver one and a, a thicker gold one, where on this side it's just a single thicker gold one. So anyway, I should be able to move those in a little bit, or I might not even have to do that. I should be able to just pull the wheel off. You can see that's loose there now. You can see the fork's loose on there. Uh, so I just need to do that, and I should be able to pull the wheel straight forward off of the forks. Okay, before I pull the front wheel off, I want to cut this uh, tie wrap here so I can get the cable for the front motor out of there um, because when I pull the wheel off I'm going to want to lay the motor back down on this part. I'll put the deck, just lay the deck on it uh, but I'm going to want to pull the motor off and set it down back here. So I had to cut that tie wrap off to give me some slack in that cable. Okay so as I was pulling this front wheel off I found that the, the large silver washer that's on the brake caliper side it's really not a whole washer, it's just uh, kind of like a half washer that was in there. So, uh, kind of strange, but whatever. Motor off and up on the deck. Now, it's very important to keep an eye on your hardware. Um, so, I'm just leaving all this on here. I didn't take the nut off, so that's going to hold our, our other washers in place. And uh, this one here that came off, uh, you just want to keep an eye on what you do with that. Don't lose that. And again, that's going on the brake caliper side. Another thing, when you pull the front wheel off of here, if you got it on a stool or something like this, this wheel is quite heavy. So if you don't have enough weight distribution on the stool, when you remove that, the whole chassis is going to tend to rock back that way, which it did on mine. Luckily, I caught it. 
uh, as I didn't have enough hanging off the front end. And of course, once you get the wheel back on there, you know, laying on the deck, it's going to weigh it down again. But for example, when I lift the wheel, now I've got it balanced, but with the, the rear wheels much heavier now you took the front wheel off there, the whole weight could just shift and, and make it fall off the, the stool. So be, be careful of that. So I'm laying this wheel down now. There's the brake rotor side. So I'm going to lay it down with that side down. And the reason I'm doing that is you can see there's some screws going in here. Not these. These are going into the motor. There's some screws down inside here further. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. The ones down inside there. That's how these rims separate. Well, you take those screws out, you'll be able to separate the rims, which is going to make it much easier to change the tire. You don't want to try to pry these tires off the rim. It's going to be much easier to take these six screws out. The rims will separate. But before doing that, very important, we got to take the air out of the tire because this is highly pressurized right now. So we start taking those screws out with pressure in this tire. It's going to pop something that might break the rim here. Um, so very important to take the air out of the tire first. I'm going to open up this cap. I'm going to actually get a valve mover, remover uh, or a small pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm going to first just push the valve to get the air, what air I can out of there, like that. And then once it's down as far as it can go, these, these tires are under a lot of pressure, but not a lot of volume, so it doesn't take long to drain the air out. So that's all the air I can get out by pushing the valve, but beyond that, I'm also going to remove the valve, or at least back it out enough, just to make sure I get all that air out of there, because you don't want any pressure on this tire when you remove these screws down here to separate the rims. Okay, so I've actually removed the valve from the tire stem, the, the inner tube stem. Here's the valve. Looks like that. And if you can see on the top, there's kind of like a, that part right there that I'm spinning. I just used a, a, a small pair of needle nose pliers, reach down into the valve, and then loosen that part and took the entire valve out. Now, uh, I did that just to show you a valve in case you don't know what that looks like. Um, if you're going to reuse this inner tube, probably a good idea to, to put the valve back in there. Yeah, I mean, now there's no valve in there, so obviously any air that's in there is out now. No pressure on the tire. So if I were going to use this, i put the valve back in there and then just tighten that up a little bit again with my needle nose pliers by grabbing that metal bar part and, and then just turning it clockwise to tighten it in. Um, I'm actually going to be replacing the inner tubes as well with new inner tubes that came with those tires. So I'm not really worried about that. Okay, now that I got all the pressure off the tire, next thing I'm going to take out these, again, don't touch these, these are just going into the motor. These ones down inside here, there's six bolts, and that's what's holding these, the, this is a two-piece rim. So when you take those bolts out, we should be able to pull this part of the rim off and then easily get the tire and the inner tube off. Okay, it looks like those screws are four millimeter Allen. Okay, so the thing is these bolts are, are down inside the rim there. So my Allen wrench won't quite reach it this way where I can get it in there good. So I have to go the long ways like this. Well, then you don't have a lot of uh, torquing ability on this little piece here. And these things are in really tight. So basically I had to find something to use for leverage. I got this thing. It's kind of from like a turnbuckle from a shade sail, but it fits on there nicely. And then I have some torquing ability. And I have to be careful because it almost feels like I'm going to break my Allen wrench. Um, but I, so far I've been able to get two of them out. Uh, so I think I'll be alright. Here's the two screws that go in there. Uh, so i got four more to go. Okay, so I got all six of those screws out that were down inside the rim there. Now hopefully this outer rim piece here will simply just pull off the wheel and it does. Um, it's very tight fit up against the motor and one thing we've got the valve coming through here so we've got to kind of work that loose. There we go. So now I got that off there, I just got to get this valve through. There, so I've gotten this whole half of the rim off, and now at this point, the tire just comes right off. Simple. Got my old tire off. 
old inner tube. Um, so then uh, that's it. At this point, if you're replacing a tire, you would do the reverse. I'm again replacing this knobby tire with this nice wide street tire. And uh, it's a little bit shorter because it doesn't have the, the knobbies on it, but uh, that's okay with me. I'm not going to be going over big bumps or, or off road or anything with this. I'm going to use this as a, a street scooter around here. Um, so I want the, the extra traction I'll get with this tire. Okay, so I got my new tire here, old tire. There's the motor and the outer rim that I just took off. And uh, on some tires, this is a street tire. And so on this tire, there's a rotation arrow to show you which way the tire rotates. So you can see the arrow's pointing that way. Um, for some reason on this uh, off-road tire, I am not seeing a rotation indicator, so I'm guessing it just doesn't matter with this tire. It's the same pattern. It kind of looks like it's the same pattern, facing that way, facing that way, so it really wouldn't matter which way you have it on, so that's probably the reason for that, I guess. Whereas on this tire, you can see it has a distinctive thread, a tread pattern, you know, kind of pointing that way as an arrow. Um, and then on the side, the rotation is going that way. So basically those arrows are going to roll forward. That would be the proper way to put it on. So I want to make sure I get this on the rim the correct way. So I'm going to go over here. Now I'm looking at the side that has the brake caliper and the brake rotor. So that's going to go on this side. So the tire sitting on here is when I'm going forward is going to be spinning this way. So as you can see, I've got the proper arrow indication there. Again, just double check it. There's my brake rotor. So the tire will be on this way and it'll be on the side of the brake rotor. So it'll, the tire's going to be spinning that way when it goes forward. And once again, my indication for rotation is going the proper way. So I want to make sure I put this tire on this way onto the rim. Okay, so the next thing I need to do, I've got my inner tube in there already, but I need to find where my valve is. So now the valve's coming out the other side, the opposite side of where the brake rotor is. And let me set the tire down here for a second. If I take this ring that's going to go on the other side of the motor to, to lock in place, that's the one that has the hole for the tire stem valve. So I've got that right. I got you got to make sure that you have your valve on the correct side. So this is going to go through here like that. I th uh, threaded the valve through the hole on this side first. So now I got that on there. And now it's just a matter of putting the tire back over the rim like this, or back over the motor and the rim and then lining up the, the screw holes and putting my bolts back in. Okay, and there we go. That went on nice and easy, so simple. So the trick is take your tires, your uh, valve stem, feed it through the hole in the rim on this side, put that in first, and then slide the whole tire uh, with the inner tube over the motor secondly, and that made it up nicely. Uh, once I Tighten up those screws, everything's snugged up. And uh, one thing too, uh, I forgot to mention this, when you put your inner tube in, if you're using a new inner tube or even the, the same one, see this one has no air in it. When you get it in the tire, you just kind of stuff it in the tire like this. Make sure it's not twisted or anything. And then put some air in it. Air it up a little bit. Uh, I think you saw the, the one I had in there. So. It, it sucks the tube inside the tire a little bit, not, not fully air, just enough to get it so it's not impeding the hole here because you don't want to get that pinched in between the two rims. You put enough air in it, it's completely, it gets out of the way, and then you can just put it straight on like that. So this came out good. I like the way this looks. Here's my front tire with the motor. Uh, I'm just going to fully air this thing up now. And I put it back on the front end. Okay, got the wheel mounted back on there. Went, went on pretty easy, just the same procedure in reverse. Put your axle through here. There's a flat part on the on the axle. There's a flat edge on the axle, so you have to line that up to go in to the fork. It won't fit if it's in the rounded way. You have to have the flat edge straight back and forward for it to slide in there. Um, then on this side, we have the 
the uh, thicker gold washer on the inside, the thinner kind of half washer next to that, then the fork, then on the other side we have the the kind of washer that locks into that little groove there, and then the nut tightening it. On this side we just have the single gold washer on the inside, then the fork, then the lock washer. It locks into that little groove here on this side, and then the nut. Now one thing to note, I had to, uh, it makes it a lot easier if you loosen your caliper when you're putting this in because you have to slide the rotor in between the brake pads and the caliper there. Um, so what I did is I loosened these two screws here and there's kind of an oval hole there. It's not just a perfectly round hole so it gives you the ability to slide the caliper in and out to some degree. So I loosened those up to make it easier to get the rotor to slide into the caliper when I put the wheel on and then you can tighten it up when you're done. That's how you actually can keep it from rubbing the brake, uh, the brake pads rubbing on the rotor too. If you're getting a little rub on your rotor from your brake pads when you spin your wheel, mine's not right now because I just adjusted it. You can just loosen these two screws and you can play with the adjustment of this caliper, moving it in or out or the top in a little bit or the back in a little bit, whatever you need to do to get rid of your rubbing. So one down, one to go. Go do the back one next. All right, before I remove my rear wheel, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rear fender off. And once you got the deck off, there's these four screws holding this whole rear fender slash handle part to the swing arm. So we're gonna remove these four screws and then take this whole piece off. I can just simply lift this entire fender handle piece and the mount off there. Still got the wire coming from the brake and tail light going up through there and then through a hole in the back of the chassis. So for now I'm just gonna set this right there. Okay, here's our rear tire. Got a better view of that. This is just kind of a rubber damper for, for noise to cut the sound for vibrations. So I'm, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna take that off because I'm gonna be painting this. And I'm gonna set that aside for now too. Don't want to lose that. Um, so there's our rear swing arm. This is a part that pivots. Uh, there's a bolt that goes through here, a big long bolt that goes all the way to the other side. That's the pivot point for a swing arm on the shocks. Um, so next I'm just going to go ahead and pull my rear tire off. Same process as the front, just loosen your two nuts here, one on each side. There's uh, some washers, there's a, the lock washer on this side right here. And then on the other side just a, a flat washer. Same thing on this side, there's a lock washer on this side. And by lock washer, I mean those ones that go into the grooves. They lock into those uh, grooves in the, in the frame there. And then just one regular washer on the inside. So just a simple matter of loosening these nuts, prying out the, the tabs that are going into the fork there. And then, again, the fork opens from the back, so we'll just pull the tire straight out the back. All right, got the rear wheel removed. Pretty simple again. Just loosen the nut on each side. There's this washer that goes on the outside of the fork with that tab that locks into the middle of the hole on the side there. And then there's the fork goes there and then the washer on the inside. Same as the other side. Washer on the inside. The washer that has the tab that goes in the hole on the outside of the fork and then the nut. That's it. Loosen those out. More slides right out the back. Again, the forks are facing the back, not down, which makes it easy. Uh, so you don't have to support the wheel. You just slide it back out. Don't have to worry about it falling or nothing. So, got that off of there. I'm going to be removing the, the rear swing arm motor mount, but we'll do that next. I want to first replace the tire on this rear wheel. So we're going to do the same thing as we do at the front. Turn it this way. Be careful of your rotor, you don't want to bend it. So I'm just going to lay it here. It's strong enough where the weight of that isn't going to do any damage. And then once again, I want to first take the air out of the tire. I'm going to remove this cap, remove the, remove the valve stem from the uh, valve, and then uh, let all the air out. Once I do that, we'll be able to remove these six screws, the ones down inside the rim, not the ones up here, the ones down inside here. 
and again to remove this valve from the stem you can see the length the, the kind of long edge going left to right there you can take a, a valve stem remover tool or I'm just using a long needle nose pliers a small needle nose type pliers I'm going to reach down inside of there and then just unscrew that valve There we go. If you unscrew it a couple turns, all the air should come out. Uh, well, I'm just going to remove it all together. There it is. Okay, so now I'm sure all the air is out of there. I can proceed with removing the six screws down inside the rim there to take the rim apart. And again, just like the front, my Allen wrench, the end where I could get some torque on it, isn't long enough to fit down inside there. So I gotta go this way. And then to get some torque on this end to twist it, I'm using this thing. You could use a small piece of pipe or just anything that'll fit over the end of your Allen wrench like this. And then uh, you can get some torque on that to, to loosen those screws. Okay, so I got those six screws out of there. Okay, so actually the easier way to do it, rather than trying to remove this side with the ring first, that has the valve stem going through it, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Flip it over and remove this side first, because there won't, won't be anything impeding it. Okay, so I pulled the motor straight out of the side. It came out pretty easy. Um, again, it's easier to do that than try to get the other side first, because of the valve stem coming through the rim right there it makes it a little bit harder uh, so now once we got the motor out of the way uh, this part will be easier to just remove this ring here and manipulate it around the valve stem like that so there we go got our motor out got the other side of the part of the rim out got our old tire off and uh, I'm going to take this opportunity while I got this part to clean this off real good it's pretty dirty in there uh, so I'm going to clean it really good before putting the other tire on, the new tire. Okay, so I uh, cleaned off my back motor rim. Actually, I just uh, set it here on this block and then hosed it down. And then uh, took my uh, leaf blower over there and just blew, blew a bunch of air on it, dried off. A little warm here today still, sun out, so it dried up nicely. Um, okay, so next thing, I got my tire for this rear wheel. And again, I want to be sure that I put it on the right way. Uh, the rotation arrow right there. As it sits on here, the brake is on this side, so the tire is going to go on this way. Uh, so the rotation arrow should go forward when it's moving forward. So I want to make sure the tire is on that way. In other words, these green and red stripes on the left-hand side of the chassis, just like it is on the front tire. And the rotor is going to be on the left-hand side of the chassis because that's going to go into the caliper there for the brakes. So I want to put this tire onto the motor this way. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, so I moved my motor up here. I put the rotor side down, which is the metal disc that the brakes pads are, are going to go to. So that's down. So that's going to be my left side is down right now. So I take my green and red stripe. There's my direction arrow. I want to put that on towards the rotor side. So like this. And that, that, that leaves my stem pointing on the upside, which is going to go through the hole on this other rim I put on. Okay, so I got that outer ring on the tire first. So I want that rotation arrow going forward. So that's good. So there's my stem, it's in the rim, so I got that part set. Now again, I put a little bit of air in the inner tube just to keep it so the inner tube is out of the way of the rim because you don't want to pinch the inner tube in between the two rim pieces. So you can see by putting a little bit of air in the tube, it uh, inflates it enough where it gets it away from the edges of this rim so it won't get pinched inside when I put it together. So now I'm just gonna take this, take it over to my motor, and just drop the whole thing down onto the motor, trying to line up the holes where the screws go. And then just put the screws in one by one. All right, so there we go. Put all the screws in, aired it up. So there we go, looks good. Really like this tire. Gonna make a much smoother ride. 
Now I got the rear tire, rear wheel mounted back on to the swing arm, and again, starting from the inside, there's just one single flat washer there. Then it goes through the fork of the swing arm. On the other side, there's that washer with the tab that goes through the slot there. And then the nut, same thing on both sides. Washer on the inside, the fork, the washer with the tab on it that goes through the chassis or into the swing arm, and then the nut on the other side. So I got that on there. While I'm spinning it, I'm taking a look at my rotor here. Looks pretty straight, don't see any wobble in it. Uh, next, I'm going to Mount the brake caliper back up. You gotta put the slot, of course, with the two brake pads over your rotor so the rotor goes in between there. And then mount that back up. Okay, so I got the caliper loosely mounted on there. And again, we had these two spacers that go between the caliper bottom and the bracket. So right now it's still loose. And this is, if you have a problem with your brake pads rubbing, you can do this too. If you'll notice, the caliper holes for this mounting position are oval. They're not perfectly round. The reason for that is so you can, you have some play in it where you can move this thing back and forth. As you can see, I can move this side, and I can move this side. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to, just with my hand, position this at the right point by moving that back and forth or whatever I need to do. You can hear it's rubbing a little bit on the brake pads now, but I'm going to position this with my hand so I don't hear any more rubbing and then while I'm holding it, I'm gonna tighten down those bolts. All right, so I got my caliper back on, got the bolts tightened, not rubbing at all when I spin it. Now, it's kind of hit or miss when you do that. It took a little time to get it just perfect. Basically what I did, I find it the easiest way to do is look down in between the two brake pads there where the road is going up inside there. So you can see there's space on both sides. And I use that as a, a guide to help me you know, when it was rubbing, I could look in there and see what side it was rubbing on, where I needed to move the caliper a little bit to get rid of the rubbing. Um, so that worked out well. Nice and smooth, no rubbing. Um, so if you have rubbing on one of your brake pads, front or back, you can do the same thing. Loosen these two screws. You don't gotta take them out if you're just adjusting it. And then, because it has that oval hole, hole in it instead of a solid hole, it gives you enough play where you can shift this thing back and forth, in or out, whatever you need to do. You can look in the back there, in between, the groove there where the rotor goes in so you can see where it's rubbing if it's rubbing and just slowly adjust it with your hand till it sounds good then just gently tighten these screws because uh, if, you, if you torque one too hard before the other it's going to shift it uh, so you got to try to avoid that once you get them snug pretty good gently then you can crank on them a little bit more to get them down tight all right so there we go okay so before mounting our rear fender back on i'm going to put this rubber gasket or rubber noise damper back in place there that's going to keep it from uh, making noise put our fender back in mount it in there got the rear fender mounted back on four bolts right here with that rubber gasket in between the chassis or I mean the swing arm and the fender so keep that quiet things on there good nice and tight um, I did take my two handles that go through here and here off because I'm thinking about uh, painting these red perhaps. Okay, that's it for this one. Wheels replaced. Very simple process. Actually a little bit simpler than the Q1. Not that the Q1 is hard. It's just uh, a, it's a little bit different. It still has the rims that come apart, so it's pretty easy. But this one's even easier. Um, so yeah, fairly simple process. Uh, next video I'm going to be doing is on the rear end. Uh, disassembling the rear end, the shocks, uh, pivot axle, the whole rear motor mount, fender, everything. Because uh, I actually, as you can see, I painted that black. Uh, so that will be the next one that comes soon. Until then, hope you have a good one, guys. Stay safe. Take care. Peace.